What's going on champions? Starting off our weekly workouts this week with a solid upper body pump. We're starting it off with some pec raise or pull apart songs. Going into some floor presses, hard style push-ups, bridge presses, hammer curls, and possibly banded triceps to keep that pump going. And then rounding off the workout with some kettlebell swings or overhead deadlifts. As always, keep fit and have fun. Workout today starts off with some front raises to the song Roxanne by The Police. You're gonna hold in the top position like so. And then every time you hear the word Roxanne, you're gonna do one rep, bringing your arms together in front. The idea is that when you're bringing your arms together, you wanna to try to engage your pecs and try to engage those upper lats. You wanna have the arms just slightly in front like so. Um, and then that way you should be able to get a really nice little pump going through that upper body. If you don't have lighter dumbbells that you can use, you can use a pair of shaker cups and fill them up like so. If you don't have any weights that you can use, another option is if you have a band to do a band pull apart with the same song, Roxanne by The Police. You're gonna hold with the arms out to the sides like so. And then every time you hear the word Roxanne, you're gonna bring your arms together and pull them back apart. For this one, we're looking more to aim for the upper back and the back of the shoulders. So try to keep those arms straight and think when you're pulling the band apart, you wanna to try to reach for the walls to your sides. First combo we're going into starts off with some dip holds. So these can be done in the top position like so, in which case you wanna think about pushing the floor away and pulling the butt back a little bit to get that midsection involved. Try to keep the chest and the lats working while we're going for the hold. For an advancement, I can start off at the top and then bring myself down to my bottom position of that dip hold, but I'm looking to still keep that midsection engaged as well as the chest and the lats. Don't forget to push the floor away. That's gonna go right into a set of floor presses, which can be done with any kind of weight, whether it be a sandbag like shown here, or a kettlebell or a dumbbell. Try to play with the angles and find the positions that let you use the bigger muscles, once again, chest and lats. What I find works the best for me is going down towards the belly button and then up towards the collarbone on the way up. I like to also play around with the tempo, so sometimes I'll use faster or slower reps, sometimes partials. Play around with it and see what works best for you to get you that pump and the required muscles for that rep range. I like to also, if I'm finding I'm getting a little bit too much shoulders with this, add a little bit of a squeeze. Try to take your fingers off if you go for the squeeze, aka you're using more of your palms, and you should be able to get a little more chest when press pressing that way. Next combo starts off with a hard style push-up. So pretty much like a regular push-up, but you're trying to get as close to a 10 count on the way down as possible. No matter how close or far you get, keep the priority on staying smooth for the repetition. After a couple of those, we're going into some bridge presses. Similar to the floor press, but maybe a little more exaggerated with the angle here. You wanna bring the butt up by using the inside of the legs and the inside of the butt. And then, like with the floor press, I like to go at a little bit of an angle here, so I'll bring the weight down towards my belly button and then push it up towards my collarbone. Adding that little bit of a squeeze if need be, depending on my object, to help me keep that chest engaged. If you have a decent amount of strength through the chest and the shoulders, you might be able to tuck your chin in while you do this as well. But if you find that bothers your neck, just leave your head down instead. And again, the key is that when you're lifting the legs, you're using the inside of the legs to keep you up while pumping away with the chest and the lats. Now that those big muscles are pumped up, let's go after those arms, starting off with some hammer curls. So for these, you are looking to maintain just enough of a squeeze to keep the shoulders active and then pump away with those arms. Try to pick a weight that lets you get to failure around the rep range. I like to add just a little bit of a lean with these and get a really good chest pump too. That's gonna go into some triceps. So two options here. First one is a banded French press. If you have a band, you're gonna reach the band up overhead after anchoring it on your feet like so. And then think about straining those arms out while flexing those triceps. Take care with this to focus more on flexing the triceps as you straighten the arms versus just locking out the elbows. 
You want to feel those muscles working here. Triceps a tough one for some people to get, especially if they focus more on just finishing the rep than feeling the exercise. You can adjust by making your hands come a little closer to add a little more difficulty to this. If you don't have a band, you can go to some skull crushers, which we've been doing for a while. These can go with any weight you have available. Give it a little bit of a squeeze to get those active shoulders. And then think about pulling the weight down towards your forehead and then straightening those arms up on the way up. Play with the angles with this. A lot of people find that if they go too low or too high, they might feel a little bit too much elbows. So adjust as need be to make those triceps do most of the work here. You want to feel them stretch as you bring the weight down. And then you want to flex and feel them pump up as you strain those arms out. Play with the range that you have available. Me personally, I like to bring the weight a little bit higher on my forehead. I find that really gets me a nice tricep pump, but I've had people feel the same with bringing it lower on their head as well. Finishing off our workout with one of two options, going to be either kettlebell swings. So for these, you're going to be going for 10 sets of five reps, looking to be explosive and powerful with every rep. Make every rep count. Take not too much of a rest in between. I would say anywhere between 10 to 20 seconds, enough to get your breath back, and then go right back for another powerful, explosive set. Give each set your absolute 100%. Think about that standing plank at the top position. Feel those hamstrings stretch at the bottom as you rebound that weight. If you don't have a kettlebell available or that swing is a little tough for you, you're going to be going for an overhead deadlift. These can be done with a dowel or a broomstick. You just want something overhead where you're going to create tension on. The key with this is to move slow with lots of tension. You're looking for five sets of three to five reps. Ideally, it should take about five, 10 seconds on the way down, five to 10 seconds on the way up. So you can imagine every rep should really take a lot of control and focus out of you. Try to really focus on feeling that stretch in the back of the legs, hamstrings on the way down, and then taking care to lift with the lower body on the way up. These reps are sped up, so don't go that fast when you do them, but focus on being controlled. When you're holding the dowel or a broomstick overhead, you wanna think about bending it into a rainbow shape. That's gonna get your chest and your lats fired up and keep you stable in that overhead position. If your elbows need to bend a little bit to allow for that, that's fine. Focus on finding the tension before the position. 